Right now, it appears that all the female, it, it appears that all victims are female. Okay, and race? Like it appears that they may be Asian. Take a look at these photos taken by surveillance cameras at the Young's Asian Massage Parlor. This is in Woodstock where the Cherokee County Sheriff's Office said four women were found dead. One person was hurt from a shooting there. Around 8.30 tonight, Long was captured after a chase. Investigators are looking into whether he is linked to the Atlanta spa killings at Gold Spa on Piedmont Road and Aroma Therapy Spa, which is right across the street from that. A large party ended with dozens of gunshots. 15 people were shot. Two of those 15 people shot are deceased. The shooting happened just before 5 o'clock this morning in the 6700 block of South South Chicago Avenue in the city's Park Manor neighborhood. The two bodies that were found in the back of this home on Anchester came as a complete shock to the many residents that live on this street. But what was even more shocking were their ages, only 17 and 21. It's very, very sad that the world has come to killing our, our young folks. Police are investigating the death of two people whose bodies were found hidden in someone's backyard. Mm, mm, mm. Exclusive surveillance video shows the moments chaos breaks out in Brownsville, Brooklyn last night. Innocent bystanders running and ducking for cover as bullets began to fly on Pickin Avenue. Those bullets leaving holes in the front of Pickin Seafood, which now serve as powerful reminders of this close call. This guy is coming for left side and uh, shoot over there. This man works in the area. He says he and his customers took cover in the back of his store after hearing at least five rounds. It's a lot of beef going on over here with, you know, a lot of gangs with the wolves and the chose. New York is just, Brooklyn, period, is just on a different level. 911 callers were saying that there were two vehicles shooting at each other while speeding down the freeway. Those two vehicles, as you'll see here, are a Charger and a Dodge SUV. I'm not sure exactly what model it is. So the two cars are shooting at each other. Eventually they crash and come to a rest here at 96 and Schaefer. In one of the cars, you've got a male driver who was shot and killed. In that same car is a female passenger. She was shot taken to the hospital, but did not survive. The growing number of homicides in the Houston area, with five overnight, including four in the city of Houston. KPRC2 Investigates has been keeping track of that number, which is now at 85 for 2021. Compare that to 59 homicides at this time last year. Four people were shot, three died, and now the neighborhood is on edge as gunfire went everywhere. Overnight, blood soaked the streets across the Houston area. Five people died, three others injured in a series of shootings, a stabbing, and a vehicle accident. There are dozens of bullet holes in the homes at Carondelet and 8th Street. Evidence of one of the two deadly shootings that killed three brothers in New Orleans. Brian, Brandon, and Bradley Veal were all killed within a single week. I have complete empathy for the family. Um, I can't imagine what they're going through. William Murray lives just steps from where 30-year-old Brandon and 21-year-old Bradley were shot the evening of February 20th. A barrage of bullets hit his home, and the sound of at least 30 shots was captured on a neighbor's camera. I'm tight and nervous, to be honest. First responders showed up. Things were pretty chaotic, telling us people were screaming in the streets. The shooting saw at least 15 victims. Chicago Fire Department taking at least seven of them to hospitals. Others transported themselves for treatment. Now, two of the people wounded didn't survive their injuries and were pronounced dead on arrival. We're told the victims appear to be both men and women, ranging in age from their 20s to their 40s. Police say four guns were recovered at the scene, but they have yet to determine a motive or any sort of explanation about what led up to bullets flying inside of that business. Uh, we want to begin with that disturbing video from Union Square. A man runs towards a woman on the platform and shoves her onto the tracks right in front of an oncoming train. Police say this is the suspect caught on this disturbing surveillance video posted to Twitter, pushing a 40-year-old woman in front of a moving five train during this morning's commute. It happened in front of other riders on the platform and a transit worker who keeps the suspect on the platform until police arrive. Jamie Partman, Dejanelle White, Damani Gibson, and a few others went to the east to find Marquez. They instead found his car abandoned, sitting in an apartment parking lot. We knew it was his car from the 
talking sticker he had in his window. There was still hope, but on Thursday, that turned to grief after a boater found Jones's body in Lake Pontchartrain. And by the time I uh, went to his mom's house, I could, I could tell, you know, from the expressions and stuff that, you know, it was him. It's difficult to talk about. Uh, but we're going to because it actually happened. Are you you're talking about five children murdered, six people dead? This is unreal. Today I charged Jaron Pridgen with six counts of murder, seventh count of shooting with intent to kill, and an eighth count of possession of a firearm while on probation. Three of those kids were his that he killed in the house. And that Tuesday morning, I was in a dead sleep when I got the call about it at seven in the morning. So I rushed to the scene and was out there for pretty much the entire day, about 12, 13 hours. And just the fact that this happened to such little kids, it, it's something that the community definitely was not expecting, definitely wasn't ready for. You know, I talked to the police chief there, Muskogee, and he told me he hadn't seen anything like that since the early 90s when he actually worked a case where a mother and four of her kids were killed in a house, something similar. So it's definitely not something you hear every day, Benny. And it's definitely not something you forget or that you forget anytime soon. Good afternoon. If you take a look behind me, you can still see pieces of Pastor Nick's car right here surrounding this tree along Sherwood Avenue. Police say he was shot multiple times in his car before they discovered his body here. Friends now telling us they're just asking for answers. He was a father figure to a lot of people. A man of God with a joyous and vibracious spirit. The DeKalb police say Dr. Kevin, who was a beloved Decatur pastor and a founder of the Higher Dimensions Fellowship Church, crashed his car into this tree along Sherwood Avenue around 7 p.m. Friday night, just a few miles away from his church after someone shot him multiple times. I will call State of Wisconsin versus Logan T. Kruckenberg Anderson. 16-year-old Logan Kruckenberg Anderson is charged as an adult with first-degree intentional murder and hiding a corpse in the shooting death of his own newborn daughter. Prosecutors say on January 5th, Kruckenberg Anderson's 14-year-old girlfriend gave birth to their child in a bathtub in her Albany, Wisconsin home, naming her Harper. In his initial statement to police, the teenager says he and his girlfriend decided they could not have the child in their life, and they agreed that he would get rid of the infant by simply dropping it somewhere. Kruckenberg Anderson says he then placed the baby in a backpack and left. He first told police he gave someone $60 to take the baby to an adoption agency. When interviewed a second time, he admitted leaving baby Harper in the woods. Police would later find the newborn with two bullet wounds to the head. Detectives say just before that young man was seen on that Ring doorbell video asking for help and to come in, he was running away from this house where they say he had just shot and killed the man inside who just found him in the bedroom with his 15-year-old daughter. Detectives say this is 19-year-old James Bryant Jr. hopping into a stranger's driveway Sunday morning and up to his door. The man inside, a father himself, did not open the door. Yo, what's up? Hello, can I uh, use the phone real quick? My phone? Yeah, my phone there. Detectives say a few blocks away, Alberto Hernandez Jr. had awoken to find Bryant inside his 15-year-old daughter's bedroom, where she told detectives she'd let him in at 2 a.m. and they'd had sex. She told them Bryant pulled a gun on her father, saying he wasn't going to jail. Hernandez yelled at his wife to call 911. The gun went off. The men began fighting, and both of them ended up shot. Hernandez died minutes later. But Bryant got away. What happened? You okay? No, I'm hurt.